friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreamy, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make some beautiful pieces of art for your home using brown craft paper. This is the kind of paper that you use to uh, wrap packages to mail. I mean, there's a, you can wrap Christmas presents, birthday presents, you can do that kind of thing too. You can make some great table runners and place settings. There's tons of things that you can do. But today we're gonna to create some beautiful pieces of art. Um, we're gonna look at some that are not uh, tied to any season, but that are faith. And then we're gonna look at some fall and some Christmas. So let me start out at the beginning by talking about brown craft paper. Okay, this is brown craft paper that you can get at Dollar Tree for $1.25. And it just says craft paper roll. And this, I was paying attention, this says 40 pound roll. Okay? This one right here is Scotch brand. And it is postal wrapping paper. And it is 75 square feet. And does it say how many pounds? I, I'm not sure how many pounds or what that means exactly, except here's the thing. When you get like a good brand like Scotch, you can find it at um, an office supply store, Walmart, Target, um, those kind of places. It's gonna be thicker and it's gonna work a lot better than the thinner, less expensive stuff. However, we're going to use this thinner, less expensive stuff to make some flowers. So, let me just throw that aside. Um, I'm going to give you a quick little preview, and then we will actually get into it, and I'll show you the, the basics of everything. Okay, this one I made yesterday, and it still has glue strings on it. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this, Esther 414. Look at this pretty little flowers that I have on it that give it sort of a 3D effect and I made a bow. Everything is made out of brown craft paper, uh, a stencil and white chalk paste, even the bow and the flowers. Okay, so that is one. And I mean, I just think those are, it costs probably 75 cents. Maybe not even that much to make it. This is one I made a long time ago, but I've had it hanging here in my craft room. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20. This one I made um, a long time ago, and I used the less expensive paper, and I can tell a difference. So for your signs, you want to get a good, heavy, thick brown craft paper. Okay, let me hang this one up too. Okay, so first thing is you want to cut your paper. And then I'm going to show you how to get it to lay flat because that is, a, that is difficult. Alright, so... You can guesstimate how big your stencil is and how long you want your uh, scroll to be. And then what I've been doing for regular size stencils is just holding my paper in half. What 
I love about these is um, that you could have, say you have one spot in your house where you hang something like this. You can swap it out for every season or occasion and you will have spent just pennies to do that. The stencils that we're going to be using today are from MagnoliaDIY.com. They're reusable many, 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 many times. It does not take very much chalk paste. Um, the paper itself is very affordable. Uh, so this is my kind of craft paper. My kind of a craft project because you're making something out of basically nothing. And it costs pennies. And you can get as creative or not as you want. Okay, I didn't do a super great job, but you can see what the paper wants to do. It wants to roll itself right back up. And that is going to be a pain unless you take a couple minutes to iron it flat. So basically, I have my iron set on cotton. And we're going to see how quick this is to get this to lay out flat. And then we'll recreate the, the scroll, the roll, at the top and the bottom. Which, by the way, your roll could be both of them in the same direction, or you can roll the front over and the top back, or vice versa. It does not matter. I had somebody ask me, isn't the um, bottom roll supposed to go back? I'm like, I don't think it necessarily is, but if you want that, you sure can. So I ironed one side of it. All right, let me put my iron away so we have room. This is one of those projects where you need to spread out. Oops. Okay, look at the difference between this and this. Which one of these do you think is going to be easier to work with? The one that I'm in flat, for sure. For sure, sure, sure. Okay, then let's talk about the roll, and then we'll do a stencil, and then we'll do a bunch, okay? And then I'll tell you about the, um, about the flowers. Oh, thank you. Nancy says your dress is so pretty. It's so nice of you. Okay, so I'm just gonna just start a roll down here. Um, it doesn't have to be any particular size, just whatever you want. And then I'm gonna do a bead of glue. And roll this into it. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again. And this will make that roll nice and strong to have two beads of glue. Um, so if this is the top, I won't need to brace it or anything to I'm just going to do a bead of glue all the way across and roll it into it. And I did not do a very good job rolling. <laughs> One side is bigger, but that's okay. I can fix that easy. Either it's bigger or I just didn't roll it very straight. Okay, let's do the other side. And what the heck, let's do it the opposite direction. And I experimented yesterday with different colors of chalk paste. Thinking, I don't want this to be boring. But here's the thing. Really, on this brown craft paper, what shows up the best is white. It really is. So, okay, 
So I'm going to come back and do another bead of glue, but what I want to do is think about what I'm going to be putting on here. And I'm going to be doing this one for fall. Grateful hearts gather here. And I want to do a big warning. Big. Uh, generally speaking, unless you're, you um, stencil a lot, I'm going to do my second row. You don't want to use a new stencil on paper. And hopefully I won't have this problem. Because these stencils are super sticky. And um, they can have a tendency to pull up. I actually like it when the roll is go both of them going the same direction. But they can have a tendency to pull up pieces of paper. So the trick for that is to fuzz, 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 fuzz. And I'm going to fuzz on my fuzzing cloth. It's called a tacky towel, actually. This is brand new. When it has that brand new stencil smell, which I love. Boy, this is so sticky, it's even sticking to my fuzzing towel. <laughs> Normally, I would use my stencil a few times before I try to use it on a piece of paper. So, talk amongst yourself for a moment. This, um says grateful hearts gather here it's a beautiful fall stencil and what i love about this is that it has a beautiful garland on it that you could use just by itself if you wanted uh also it has the words in it you can use you could use those separately too so it's a very versatile fall stencil uh oh and with these big ones, you do want to be very careful that you don't get them folded over on themselves. Um, so if you're brand, brand new to stenciling, choose a stencil that's this size to work with. Okay, one more time. And if you weren't waiting, I would probably do it about four more times because this is brand new. It's still pretty darn sticky. It's making me feel afraid that it's going to pull up the paper. Only one we're gonna do, so just bear with me. Okay, let's say good and hope for the best. But seriously, use your stencils a couple of times before you try to use them on any kind of paper. Um, and then placement is just whatever appeals to you. Do you like your stencils to be at the very top? Or do you like them, you know, on the roll? This is what I'm talking about. Or would you like it in a different spot? Okay, so I'm pressing my stencil down, but not as hard as what I might ordinarily do. Put a little, little wax on your paper. That's a great idea, Sherry. It's too late for me now, but... That is a great idea. So this is just white chalk paste. And I'm going to put some big blobs on here. I don't know if we'll use all of that or not. This is a small cut apart squeegee that I have not cut apart. And you're going to be surprised how quickly this all comes together. And if you're like me, you're crafty, but you're not artistic. I could never draw something like this. These stencils are a great craft essential 
because you don't have to have any artistic abilities to use a stencil. Um, just get everything covered and then I'm going to stop. Okay, I think I have it. I'm going to put this little bit left back in my little pot and then I'm going to start lifting. I'm going to just take my time, lifting it up a little bit at a time. Wow. Let's do this thing. This is going to be so pretty, you guys. This is a beautiful stencil. Oh my gosh. Woo! That is so pretty. Okay, let me pop this in my tub of water. Get a paper towel. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. We might have to embellish this a little further tomorrow because this is what I've been working on in addition to what we have here. I've been working on some fun styles of fall leaves and acorns. And my idea is to embellish a project with some of these. So I've just been, I have been uh, playing all morning. Okay, so then the next thing I would do is decide which kind of jute or string I want to use. And I'm going to just use this one. Uh, this is natural polished hemp. It's from Walmart in the jewelry section. And what I like about this is that if you're using wood beads, it is easy to get them on this because it's polished. I'm just going to feed that through my little loop. It's way too much, but that's okay. Pull it up, decide how big or small do I want this to be, and it does not matter, and I'm just going to do a knot, and look, look how easy peasy peasy that was, so I'm going to cut this off, we'll hang it up so it can dry, and we may can come back and embellish this one tomorrow. Okay, so that's an example of a fall. Here is an example of a Thanksgiving. This is this cute stencil that um, is called Tom Turkey. I love it. I would love this for a uh, table runner made out of this brown paper. So I stenciled it. And I'm just going to show you the, the roll on the bottom. I just think it's easiest if you do two beads of, of uh, glue. And if you want, you can try to put a pencil or something inside to smooth it down. Um, Isn't that cute? Look at the detail in that turkey. Okay, let's put a little hanger on him. And I may come back and add some white beads. I don't know. But for now, we'll just do this. Okay. Oh my gosh. And then I have, I have two others that we're going to work on that are amazing. So, basically what these things cost, I'm going to leave this one long so I can come back. Um, is the cost of the little bit of paper. And when I bought this Scotch uh, postal wrapping paper, I think it was, I think it was around $6. And it's, it has 75 feet, square feet. Um, so 
it is just not going to cost you uh, much at all to do these projects. And like I said, the stencils are reusable many, 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 many times. I have this one out. Oh, and I have this one that I'm working on. Look at this. Oh, Christmas tree. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, this is Merry Christmas 2020. It, um, it has been retired and then brought back a couple times. It's available if you're watching this live right now. But I think when it's gone, it will be gone. And I've done so many pretty projects with that. Okay, so I have, have this piece of paper ready to go. Let's get this one. So let's do the top scroll. Okay, and here's the trick. This is a long yard stick. You can put in here, do a bead of blue. it into it. And I'm going to use my yardstick. Right here. To push my paper into that glue. Let's do one more. If you do these two layers of glue, I feel like you really don't need to reinforce this top that you're going to put it through. Debbie Larson Travis says she has the Merry Christmas stencil and she loves it. I do too. We love it. And I've done so many different projects with it. I'm just looking at this. Where I didn't get it pushed down, I don't want to be able to see that. So, let me add a little more glue in there. Okay, that's a little better. better when the scrolls are both running and rolling up on the same side. Also, I personally like it better when both ends are about the same size. big piece and you know what because I want it not to be so much paper I think on the top here I'm going to roll that a little bit more you want to try this on a pillow you know what I did this uh, last year or the year before and I gave it to my friend Debbie uh, my button friend uh, anyways I did it on a, a round that I had painted um, uh, creamy white, a kind of a, an ivory color, and then I stenciled it with uh, black glitter chalk paste, and I poured uh, really fine glitter on it, and it stuck in it, and oh my gosh, it was the most beautiful thing. It really was. Okay, I think this is going to make more sense. I'm 
just looking to see what where do I want my top to be. I think I want my top to be there. Okay, so this stencil I have used uh, probably 20 times at least. But I'm going to give it a quick little bit of fuzz just to make sure. I don't think it's going to stick or create any problems for me. Okay, let's say good enough. And I'm going to put this on here. And one thing I will do is I will measure to make sure I have it basically centered and straight. straight. Now if you want, you could do this in another color or while it's still wet, we could sprinkle some of this glitter, which I don't know where mine is right now, on it and that would be lovely. Um, see lots of people on. When I'm all finished, I will get you guys all the information about everything that we used. Um, it's a supply list or a recipe list. Um, so let me know if you want that, and I'll just reply in the comments to your requests. I love the detail on this stencil and the old-fashioned uh, design of it. It's just lovely. Either I have too much chalk paste or not enough. I can't seem to land anywhere in the middle. <laughs> so I've got a lot of extra. And I'm just going to make sure that I have everything covered. Pull off the big globs. Get this little area right here. And I'm going to resist the urge that I always have to keep going over and over and over it. Oops. Okay, this is what it looks like. Oh my gosh. The detail of this in the white chalk paste on this brown craft paper is stunning. Okay, so my pot, that my little tub that I'm putting my stencil in is not big enough, obviously, for this big of a stencil. So I'm sort of folding it over on itself, but not sticky side to sticky side. This is uh, the other. Um, so the, the top is laying on top of itself. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? It looks great. And it's, this is almost free. So you can make this for every friend, every neighbor. You can just crank these out by one good roll of um, Scotch brand or something like that. This is much better than the Dollar Tree kind uh, for $6. And then you can make a ton of these and just give them to everyone. And they will never know that it was such an inexpensive craft for you to do. Pat, I'll get you the recipe. And I'm going to list what the name of this uh, paper is that I love so much. Um, so that if you... If you even want to, you can get exactly the same thing. Okay, stay there. All right, so I have one more to do. Um, and I think I'll do this. I'll roll this one up off camera. But look at that. All right, let's do, um, let's do one more. 
with a faith stencil and then I'll show you how to build um, the flowers. There's so many great options. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Um, this is a beautiful one, but I don't think flowers would look right on it, but it would be gorgeous on this brown craft paper. It says, I lift my eyes, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2. This is gorgeous. Um, I think I'm going to do this one. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And we're going to make a flower to put right here. This is a beautiful one too. Every good and perfect gift is from above. James 1.17. This one's pretty for fall. It says, hello fall. Um, this one's beautiful too. And it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verse 14. And then this is the one that I did first. That has the flowers on it. I love this stencil. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. Esther 414. Okay, so we're going to do this one. And I'm going to cut this in a little bit because, it, I mean, it is so long. And I won't have so much to roll. this to build our flower on. Okay, so let's just quick roll. spots. Carol says, I love these stencils. I do too. Oh my gosh. Um, they're such a good investment in your crafting stash. Seriously. I totally recommend them. Okay. I'm going to be switching this clear up here. So let's roll this one. designs where it's running um, uh, vertical up and down rather than wide but okay this is a beautiful design where we we're gonna stencil it real quick and then stay with me because I'm going to show you how to make paper rolled rosettes and then I'm going to show you how I basically kind of painted mine to give it some definition have used this stencil many times. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 105. what's underneath my little table because I've been gluing up a storm. All right, let's get just a little bit more chalk paste. We'll finish this one off and then we will um, build some rolled rosettes out of brown craft paper. 
Hey, and if you guys like this project or like these kind of projects that are practically free, do this or a heart. And think about sprinkling. That helps me so much. Especially after my trip out to be with my mom. Uh, Facebook is mad at me. My algorithms are terrible. And they're, you know, not showing anything I'm doing really to anyone. So sprinkling just means putting this video on your Facebook wall. That helps me a ton. Okay, I'm going to put all this back because I'm not wasting any of that goodness. And let's just make sure I have everything covered. I think I do. And it's awesome! Okay, I'm going to throw this in my tub over here. And first thing I'll be doing when I get off this video is washing my stencils. Okay, so I want to build maybe two or three. We'll see how much room we have flowers to go on that lantern. And so I'm going to use a combination. This is the good heavyweight paper for the base. And then I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree thinner brown craft paper to make the flower. All right, so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We'll probably end up trimming it anyways. We'll make two, and then I'll see. I probably will want one more because you always want to do embellishments in odd numbers. I think these are going to be too big, so I'm going to trim them once we get our um, rolled rosette on them. And then this is a mess here, but I'm just going to um, cut a long strip. And I'll tell you how wide this is. It really, it's not super important that it be a particular width. But this is about three inches wide, roughly. Okay, and then I'm going to crumple it. Um, Hallie Coffee, what is your uh, wife's name? I, I know, I know it, but my brain's not completely functioning. Marilyn, I will get you a recipe or supply list that has a direct links to all of these so you don't have to hunt it down. But if you want to look at my website right now, it's magnoliadiy.com. All smooshed together, no space, magnolia, D-I-Y, period, C-O-M. Okay, so I'm just crumpling this paper. this and then you know when we do roll rosettes we usually start with a little fold I'm gonna just make a little smooshed center with my paper and let's put a little glue in there to help it stay and then I'm gonna put a blob of glue in the center here Tape it on there, or glue it on there. And then I'm doing the same thing as when we make rolled rosettes. I'm just um, twisting and scrunching and pulling it around the center and gluing it down. It's exactly the same process if you've ever made rolled rosettes and you can do it with the paper. It feels a little weird. It does feel a little weird. So I'm scrunching it, rolling it, and pushing it into my glue.
And you could do this narrower if you want. Okay, I think that's going to be plenty big. So let me just cut off my tail. And then I'm going to cut around this rolled rosette to get the edge off. Oh, okay, this is um, Hallie Coffee. What is your name? I know I know it because I've responded to you a couple times, but I cannot remember it right now. What do you guys think about this idea? Do we like it? Do we like making these practically free scrolls? Okay, so I have this long tail that I'm going to trim. Um, and actually, I might just fold it over. That sometimes works better. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm just going to fold it over and glue it down. This is very glue intensive. Um, and you're likely to get glue on your fingers. So you definitely want to be using a low temperature hot gluing device. Definitely, because look at my fingers. Um, if you don't want to get any really awful hot glue burns, which nobody wants those. All right, I'm just pulling the strings off. Let's do one more real quick. And then I'll show you how to um, basically paint them. Oh my gosh, and then I'm going to be cleaning up my craft room for years. So I'm going to make the center of the rolled rosette. When we're using canvas duck or lace or something, we tie a knot, but that's hard to do with this brown craft paper. And just to remind you, this brown craft paper that we're using is the lighter, less expensive stuff that came from, um, that came from Dollar Tree. Joe, Elaine, I love the Magnolia stencils too. I have so many of them. And I use them all the time. I think they're a really good investment in my crafting anyways. In, I think in anyone's crafting because I was look, just looking through my fall stuff and thinking, oh my gosh, I have so many beautiful things for fall that I had tucked away when we were in spring and summer. And now I just can pull them right out. So I'm just twirling and scrunching and sticking it into my glue. The messier, the better. Okay, we're going to make this one smaller. This is what it looks like. So, we'll cut the tail off. Then I'm going to cut around it to remove what we glued it on. And we'll pick the glue strings off. And I'm going to show you the next part. So, I have a couple spots where it's wanting to kind of pull up and I'm just going to glue those spots down and I'm going to tuck this around the back and glue it down Okay, so here's two flowers. And I think they both look great. Did you know that you can make brown paper rolled rosettes? Yes, you can. Okay, so this is my um, white chalk paste, which it should have the cap on it. I'm being bad, but I haven't done that yet. And I'm just going to take a blob 
and I'm going to put the cap on it so it doesn't dry out. Um, I put a blob on my paper plate, and this is just a little sponge, a kitchen scrubby sponge uh, that I was using on the other ones, and it's fine. I'm going to dip it in my chalk paste, and then I'm just going to pounce it on this. Can you guys see? It's grabbing to the raised areas. And depending on how much you want, you can keep going or you can say to yourself that's plenty. create some little leaves too. I might play around with that when I'm not live anymore. Okay. So, let's see. Is this right at all? Mm, not particularly. Let me get my heating gadget, my heating tool. And I'm going to quick dry this area. gadget that impatient crafters <laughs> need. Yeah, just put supplies and I have started a long list of all the stencils that I showed you. Plus the brown craft paper and I'm going to include what brand it is and all the particular information. Um, so just say supplies or recipe or something. Um, and I'll get I'll just reply in the comments right to you. Okay, so here's two of our flowers. I think I'm just going to put them right here. And I'm thinking now that I'm looking at it, that I could either use some leaves, I think that's what, or another small flower. But let's just pop these on. some dimension to it. I will make one more um, small flower when I'm not live to pop on there. I might make some leaves too. This, by the way, is the best polished hemp. It's the best stuff to use if you're doing um, wood beads or any kind of beading because it's easy to get things on it because it's polished. Um, it comes from Walmart and it's with the jewelry making stuff in the craft department. Other than the glue strings, what do you guys think? Let me uh, hold everything up one more time to show you. And then I will get pictures. Okay, here is the Merry Christmas. Look how beautiful that is. And it's big, generous size. Love it. It's still kind of wet. Here is the first one that we did, which I could come back and add some embellishments to this. 
This one says, grateful hearts gather here. And you know what? I could do flowers over the top of those pumpkins if I wanted. Here is the Tom Turkey one. On brown craft paper, the white chalk paste just gives so much detail. I just love it. Okay, here's the one that I did, I worked on yesterday and today. And it has the flowers on it. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. Ruth, Esther, sorry, 414. Isn't this pretty? Okay, and then here is the one that I had done before. And for comparison, I want to show you another one that I did. This is the Behold, the Revelation one, 320. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, I can't read backwards. And knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20. Okay, so at the same time I made that, I also made it in gray. I just want you to see what a difference the white chalk paste is to gray. It's hard to see the gray. Honestly, I think boring is better in this instance and use white chalk paste, not another color. Okay, and then here is this one, which I'm going to continue working on it later this afternoon. Oh gosh, there's a ton of glue strings. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. And tomorrow, we're going to do something fun. I'm not sure exactly what. With some uh, leaves for fall that I'm just hand cutting out. I'm just eyeballing them, and I'm decorating them with these. They're finally back in stock. Finally. These are called uh, ink and chalk paste markers. Um, there's eight. You get black, uh, black, white, silver, and gold in ink and in chalk paste, and I use these all the time. So tomorrow, we're either going to make a wreath, or we might make a garland. I haven't decided, and I also have a um, figured out what my uh, verses are. I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me that. He always does. Sometimes quicker and earlier in the week than others, but this has been a crazy week for me. If you're watching this live, I've been with my mother in Boise, Idaho. Um, she's probably on her last days on earth. Or getting near to that, anyways. So, all right. Well, I hope you liked this project. If you decide to do it, uh, Trudy, I'll get the troll as soon as I hop off. I hate that we even have have to mention that. Uh, Malik Fresh is a troll. Don't anyone respond to him. Um, I will uh, block and ban him from this page, and I'll delete his comments. So here's uh, just a little security tip for you. You guys don't respond to him directly. Uh, just delete it and block and ban him because you don't want a conversation coming back and forth. Um, if you wanted to give this as a gift and make it permanent, you could spray one of these with a clear matte sealer spray very lightly, but it's not going to come off. It's it's, it's stable and permanent, and on paper, chalk paste isn't really washable because your paper will be ruined if you get it wet. Oh, thank you, Ramona. Okay, you guys, I hope you liked this. Um, come back tomorrow for Christ in Crafting. I usually do those on Sundays between 12 and 4 p.m. 
And if you don't know what that, that is, it's where we do a craft that pertains to a Bible verse or um, something from God's Word or, you know, something about God's character. And then we actually go into the Bible and see what God has to say about it. And it's like my favorite day of the whole week to craft. So I would love to have you guys join me tomorrow. Thank you to everyone who did stars. I so appreciate that. I will let you guys know in the morning roughly what time I think I will be on. And uh, anyways, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking for the pictures. Uh, I will get everything finished up and get some good pictures. I'll put those here in the comments as well as just on DIY Journey. Okie dokie. Bye, everyone.